This is your Filipino radio experience in Las Vegas. PHLV Radio. American Pacific Islander Nurses Association of Nevada presents Healthy Mondays with Apina of Nevada. Start the week healthy and right with interesting conversations on living a healthy lifestyle. And now, your Healthy Mondays host, Dr. Mary Faye Axon Armstrong. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Healthy Mondays. Today is a great day because we have a great topic that we have to share with you. I am Dr. Zara Burines. I am an assistant professor at Nevada State College, a president-elect of AAP of Nevada, and a chair for AAPI of Community Engagement at Nevada State College. And today I will be joined with one of my co-hosts here, which is Dr. Rowena Bermodo. Hello everybody, I am Dr. Rowena Bermundo, one of the founding members of AAPNA of Nevada. I'm also an assistant professor at Roseman University of Health Sciences. Thank you for joining us today and on behalf of uh, Dr. Armstrong, we welcome you to Healthy Mondays. Okay, so thank you so much, Dr. Bermondo. So we will proceed. So our topic today is about self-care. You know for sure that self-care is very, very crucial and very essential for everyone. So self-care is one of the basic thing to do. You know, between you and me, most probably we should be doing self-care every single day, right, Dr. Bermondo? Correct. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, we will talk also about our mental health because with this COVID, there's a lot of things going going on in our lives, not only here in Nevada, but across the nation. So we will talk about that. But our guests for this afternoon are all students, not only students, but they're nursing students mm -hmm. from different schools here in Las Vegas. They will be sharing their experiences about their mindfulness of their self-care while they were having this COVID experience. And then we know for a fact that there's a lot of nurses out there who was a little bit, they were be in balance about the dead because they forgot about their self-care. Dr. Mm -hmm. Bermondo, are you aware of that? Y yes, so we, there's a, a lot of evidence pointing out to what you just said, Dr. Berenius. Mm -hmm. And we're, in fact, there are some people out there that were like, they were, imbalanced, they were dissatisfied, and most of them have a negative impact of their lives because of the fact that they forgot about their self-care. And did you know that self-care is very, very like current? So there's a lot of people just going back to the basic because they know for a fact that if you will not do it, who else will do it? All right, so without further ado, we will welcome all our guests for this afternoon. Dr. Bermondo, can you mention them all? Okay, so with us are Samantha, Dustin, Richard, and Justin. But before we, uh, the our guests introduce themselves, let me say something about mental health and self-care during this pandemic. As the coronavirus pandemic swept across the world, it induced a considerable degree of fear, worry, and concern in the population at large and among certain groups in particular, such as the older adults, care providers, and people with underlying health conditions. The COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting economic recession have neg negatively affected many people's mental health and created new barriers for people already suffering from mental health and substance use disorders. During the pandemic, about 4 in 10 adults in the U.S. have reported symptoms of anxiety or depressive yes. disorder, a share that has been largely consistent up from 1 in 10 adults who reported these symptoms from January 10 to June 2019. Mm. A health tracking poll from July 2020 also found that that many adults are reporting specific negative impacts on their mental health and well-being, such as difficulty sleeping or eating, increases in alcohol consumption 
or substance use and increasing chronic conditions or worsening chronic conditions due to worry and stress over the coronavirus. As the pandemic wears on, ongoing and necessary public health measures expose many people to experiencing situations linked to poor mental health outcomes, mm -hmm. such as isolation and job loss. Today, our guests, just like Dr. Borinas mentioned, will share their perceptions of mental health and care and the overall impact of the pandemic in their lives as a student and as an individual. So let me welcome again, uh, Justin, who would be the first to introduce yourself, please. Hi everyone, so my name is Justin Carbonell. I'm a BSN student at Roseman University, class of 2022. Um, I'm actually my cohort's president. I'm the treasurer of our critical care and emergency services um, organization, and I'm actually the president of the Honor Society at Roseman University for the Nurse School of Nursing. Okay. Thank oh. you, Justin, and go ahead, Dr. Burinas. Thank you so much. Um, Justin, and welcome to our show. So the next um, person that should introduce herself is Ms. Samantha Cooksey. Come on, Samantha. Hi, I'm so glad to be here. Um, like Dr. Z said, my name's Sammy. I'm recently graduated from Nevada State College. Um, like we said, um, just graduated, just took the NCLEX, so just fresh out of that. Wow, I congratulations, a... Samantha. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> there you go, Samantha. Thank you, um, I was um, had the pleasure of being awarded the Beverly um, award from Nevada State, specific to Nevada State, but that was really great on the president's list and um, was able to graduate with summa cum laude honors. So that was really great as well. Yay, thank you so much, Samantha. We are thank so you. honored to have you here with us today. So the next um, person that should be introducing himself is Dustin Johnson. He is also from Nevada State College. Dustin, come Hello, on everyone. in. Hello, yes, my name is Dustin Johnson. Um, like Sammy, I just graduated in uh, May of 2021 from uh, Nevada State with my BSN. Um, I also just took NCLEX and passed. Yes, yeah. and, uh, Congratulations. Justin will be there soon, bro. <laughs> but, uh, Thank you. No, I currently work at Mountain View Hospital as a uh, sterile technician in the OR. Um, I just signed my offer today to move over to the cardiac unit, so I'll be a cardiac nurse. And uh, actually, Sammy didn't mention that either. She'll be working there as well, but more on the neural floor. So, but yeah, no, that's, that's pretty much about me. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you so much, Justin. In addition, Justin also is a non-traditional student, a dad of two, and of course, the wife is also a nurse. So you could see most probably Justin has a lot of you know things to share with us as we go along. Uh, and congratulations for passing your NCLEX, Justin and Samantha. Very good, good job. So the last um, guest that we have today is Richard Uz. Richard, come on in. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Uz. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank Opina and uh, PHLV Radio for allowing uh, this uh, podcast to happen. It's a pleasure to meet uh, everyone. Um, I'm a third semester uh, nursing student at uh, the College of Southern Nevada within the ADN program. Um, I'm also the president of APINA CSN. Uh, I'm also involved with uh, uh, APINA CSN where we've administered hundreds, if not thousands of uh, uh, COVID vaccines throughout the valley. Um, I'm also involved with APINA Nevada as well and PNA and B. Um, I work at a, uh, at a uh, Red Rock Surgery Center and I uh, work with pre-op, OR, and PACU, PACU patients. And um, I'm just really excited to be here and learn as much as I can about nursing. And uh, throughout my journey with nursing school, I've absolutely fell in love with it. And um, we'll see where it uh, goes from here. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Richard. So are we ready, Dr. Bermondo? Yes, Dr. Bernanis. All right, let's start. So basically, I am so, you know, like excited to throw the first question. So the first question goes to either Richard or Dustin. One of you could answer this question, okay? The first question is, how did the pandemic change your life as a student? 
So since uh, Sammy and Dustin graduated, I'm just going to go through it to the two uh, currently students at this point. Richard and Justin, that is for you. For me, the pandemic changed as a, um, my life as a student because I was excited to go back to school. Um, I was out of um, school for about two years. So coming back was a very big change, especially knowing that a lot of schools have um, gone virtually. So I think that was kind of the biggest adaptation that I had to do as a student. Um, but we were lucky enough to do half the amount of stuff um, as like the pandemic kind of progressed. Um, so now I'm kind of like slowly coming back into like the hospitals. So that was the biggest thing for me coming into nursing school was kind of not knowing if I was going to have that hands-on experience going into clinicals. So that was kind of like my biggest fear um, starting off kind of just nursing school in general in the middle of a pandemic. Mm, thank you. What about Richard? Can you share something about your experience? Absolutely. I actually typed up the questions with a couple answers. Uh, so I've always uh, perceived, you know, aspects with a half full approach. Um, obviously, with the pandemic, there was uh, minuscule obstacles that came within the way, but we have to look at it in an optimistic standpoint. Um, you know, with all these adversities, uh, one of my sayings is you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think as a student nurse, that's one of the main things we have to do is being uncomfortable being or being comfortable being uncomfortable um so online learning was primarily the the main aspect that was the most difficult um you know that was a huge learning curve uh although as what justin was uh, reiterating um you know with the upcoming semester now that we're potentially going back into person that's gonna absolutely open doors for not only myself but you know the upcoming students as well so um, the pandemic has absolutely changed my life as a student in a, in a good manner because um, it's either you're taking a good approach or a bad approach. So, All right. See, you can see that despite of this pandemic, there's still positive things that happened to us, correct? And that's a good one. Very good. Thank you, Richard and Justin. The second question would be for Dustin and Sammy. How did you practice self-care or maintain your mental health? Sammy, you can come in first. Ladies first, anyway. <laughs> I think Justin should go first, right? <laughs> um, no, so I I ended up evolving over the, the schooling. So at first, I'm such a stress case, and I um, stopped going to the gym just to focus on school because school's number one, you know, stop going on hikes, like just put a – put a halt on so many things that I used to enjoy doing until I, I don't know what, I can't remember which, I think it was just before COVID hit. I finally was like, I needed to go outside. So I went on a hike and it was just the amount of stress that I just was able to let go. Um, through that hike was like, oh my gosh, why haven't I done this? Um, this, this whole year, you know, during the, during my first year of nursing school and then that I started going back to the gym I got a gym membership and then once the gyms opened back up because of COVID um but in that time I would go on hikes again at least take an hour to myself a few times a week just helped so much more with the last year of schooling especially mm -hmm. during COVID because it's you know it's an adjustment for everybody so um that helped m me a lot and I saw how tore down my body was not taking that self-care route that first year comparing it to the second year so that's what I did I went to the gym I'd go outside and all hike. right no wonder yeah. you maintain your grade at summa cum laude you did something <laughs> different out there despite of COVID right you are so good yeah. thank you so much you're gonna inspire other people out there what about Dustin can you share your experience with us well, I hate to say it, but I really didn't do a lot of self-care. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, nursing school, you're, you're constantly studying. And if you're not studying, you feel bad for not studying. And when you're trying to do self-care, then you have regret. And it's a catch-22 in my mind, it was anyways. So one of the one of the main things I was able to do is, you know, of course, me and Sam, you're part of the same study group. And we, we made it a habit to not only study, if it be on Zoom or at, at see each other's house, but within those study sessions, it wasn't just all 
study. You know, if we had to stop for 30 minutes and chit chat or, or, you know, go do something or, or whatever, just to kind of break up the study a little bit to keep our insanity or our sanity. <laughs> but, uh, so it, yeah, but unfortunately I really didn't do as much as I should have done because I was always in a book. Yeah. All right. See, you could see, you know, that there are some people still had an advantage over the COVID because, you know, the technology, they were able to get things done still. So on that, those are the good points that Sammy and Justin just shared with us. All right, Ms. Bermondo, I think it's your time now to throw questions for them. Yeah, send for the next uh, question, if uh, all of you could answer or share your experience. So uh, tell us, how did you maintain your connections with family, friends, and the community? And how is important are those connections for your mental health? You guys mind if I go first? Yes. Start it off. <laughs> <laughs> go um, for it. I tried making the connections with my family, and it didn't work. No. Um, of course, I, I live with my wife and have, have my kids, so that connection's always there. Um, maintain the connections with my friends because my friends were in the nursing program as well, for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the community, you know, not a whole lot we could do during the pandemic out within the community. Mm -hmm. And so just essentially the people that I trusted to be around, I would invite over to my home and, uh, you know, small gatherings, nothing that would break the, the COVID rules at the time. And we'd barbecue and, and hang out and just, I mean, whatever we could do just to kind of break up the day and, and get some social interaction with everybody. But having my family was a huge part of uh, getting through it all and maintaining my sanity. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. So who's next? Who would like go. to answer next? Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, go ahead oh, okay, cool. Um, so I had the privilege, um, my parents let me stay with them during the, the nursing program. So I was in very close quarters with my family throughout this whole, um, the whole experience through nursing school and you know COVID and stuff like that. So that helped me a lot even though we got on each other's nerves a lot. Um, and then like Justin said, he would, you know, invite us out. We, you know, would do barbecue. So I'd get away from my family for a little bit and get some new people to hang out with. So I, I think I was very fortunate to have my family around me. And then as well as like Zoom and like FaceTime, and I was able to just talk mm -hmm. to other people, my friends and stuff like that, um, that, that was, as much as I could get, and I was thankful for that. So, you know, I think that's what I did to keep in touch. And to answer your second question, um, family and social interaction is very big for me. Mm -hmm. And I take that, and, you know, it was an adjustment for sure, and, but we made it work. So it was, it was okay. It mm -hmm. ended up being okay. Yes. And Richard, would you like to be the next person to answer? Sure. Uh, so, you know, I believe maintaining those connections with your family and friends, that's one of the main pillars within mental, uh, your mental health in general. Um, you know, as everyone, that was the most common thing to do was just Zoom chats, FaceTime, video chat with people. So that's exactly what I did with my uh, friends and uh, family. You know, I am the caregiver of my uh, elderly mother. Uh, so if anything, that we, we're really, really close. We're best friends. Te typically, uh, technically, so that brought us even closer. And you know, small Filipino mother, you know. Um, and uh, so, what I actually did with my friends, you know, uh, I put my mother as priority. I'm not going to hang out even during a pandemic. I'm not going to hang out with my friends to so jeopardize my mother's health, mm -hmm. especially with her all her co comorbidities and underlying issues, uh, health issues. So, what we did as a group of friends, we actually had Zoom chats together, and we actually worked out on online together so we had you know all, a lot all of us have you know small little gyms in our garages so we would put the camera on the side and we would work out together for an hour or hour and a half whatever it took so that allowed us to bond uh and maintain our our friendships with one another yet you know socially distance in, a, in an appropriate manner so yes we 
we learned to be creative during this yeah. pandemic. Yeah, and I couldn't agree with you more, Richard. Uh, I'm so thankful as well for the technology that we have at this time. Uh, I've also used FaceTime to connect with, with family and friends. Uh, so, uh, Justin, any addition? Well, it's going to be probably picking back off what you just said, Dr. Bermundo. Um, a lot of my connections were kind of through FaceTime and um, just kind of phone calls because um, I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area and I moved to Vegas for the first time, like outside of uh, the Bay Area by myself. So I just kind of had to just talk with my parents every day, just kind of FaceTime with friends just kind of to maintain kind of uh, my mental health, just because I was by myself for the first time. And then just being away from everyone and on top of not being able to like physically interact with, you know, new people in my cohort because um, because of social distancing. Um, so I tried to be, I tried to kind of immerse myself in my like nursing community as much as I could, given like the circumstances. Um, but for the most part, it was just kind of, doing kind of like online video games, talking with friends, kind of doing the virtual happy hours. So those were kind of things that I did. And I do think that like mental health is important, especially with like social interactions. Cause um, actually one of the happy hours I had with my cousins, one of our topics was like, how are you doing mentally? And a lot of people's social batteries were just kind of very depleted, even though that they weren't going out and talking to people, mm -hmm. just being able to be around people physically and just like experience other people's energies. I think that was a big thing for people to just kind of like feel a part of something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you all for sharing your experience. Uh, I don't know with you guys, but I felt that uh, I've missed my family more yeah. uh, during this time and uh, I've connected with them more as well during the pandemic. So thank you for sharing uh, your experiences. So the next question is uh, for if uh, Richard and Justin could answer. Can you share a situation or a few scenarios where you felt that you were neglecting yourself during yeah. the lockdown? And what did you do to cope? Richard, would you like to answer first? Sure. Uh, so a situation that I felt I was neglecting myself during the lockdown. Uh, it was probably the beginning of, you know, 2020 when, you know, eight, March, April, when it all started, um, you know, physical, physical activity is extremely important because that benefits your mental well being, as we all know. Uh, so, you know, not getting that daily dose of dopamine, oxytocin, all those neurotransmitters, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it absolutely affected me. So obviously not being able to go physically to the gym, um, of course we all gained a couple pounds. Uh, so I was talking to my friends and like, hey, we need to do something in order to benefit our physical health. Therefore, uh, you know, piggybacking onto our mental health. So what did we do? We, you know, a lot of, we didn't have a gym during the time uh, because a lot of people were price gouging, you know. Uh, so what did we do? We. Uh, ran around our communities. We even got, you know, five gallon water bottles and used those as weights. You know, we had to be creative. That's right. We really, really mm -hmm. had to be creative with what we had, you know, um, being in a Filipino household, we have bags of rice, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, <laughs> so that were, uh, those were times, and especially, you know, it was, it was very easy to not do anything during those times because we were all in that episode, what can we do, mm -hmm. you know, so, Ultimately, it was just trying to figure out how to stay active, how to stay mentally stimulated, how to stay physically stimulated, and keep in touch with uh, all your family and friends. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I agree. What I did as well uh, is, you know, do Zumba online. I know Dr. Borinas <laughs> is a fan of Zumba, and she does it really well. <laughs> so, Justin, how about you, Justin? Uh, mine will kind of be the same. Um, I do. I'm a person who likes to have a routine, and when the pandemic hit my base the biggest part of my routine that changed was like like richard not being able to go to the gym um so that's where i kind of uh just stopped working out in general um because i so i'm i'm a power lifter as well so i have like a strict schedule for me to like train and so once that was taken away from me i was like you know what i'm just not gonna do it all together and 
Well, kind of a post what Richard said, I didn't gain weight. I actually lost a good amount of weight because I wasn't being as active. And that's where I just kind of stopped really kind of taking care of myself where I was like, you know what, I, just, I can just be doing something else or I can just be studying or reading a book. Um, so I think for me, it was just kind of, what's it called? Like finding other things for me to do, like other outlets. So I forgot how much I love reading books. So that's what I started doing instead of kind of going out and instead of like working out, I would just sit in the sun and read. So it was just kind of finding new things for me or just old stuff that I, I used to love to do and just kind of go back to those type of, those activities. Mm. See, Dr. Bermondo, they're becoming like creative, you know? Yes, that's so true. they are all set with your questions, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, so the next question is really, before, uh, before I jump in, I just realized, uh, you know, while you are expressing your experiences during the pandemic, last month, we were able to like identify and like question some of our nursing students from other countries. Actually, uh, the diaspora group based on Sydney, Australia, had to gather all of the students across the nation. So there were students from Bahrain, from Qatar, UK, Australia, US, of course, and then Philippines. They were also asked, what are the things that they do? What are the things that they learn? So these are the three things that they mentioned. So they were become creative. Others said their time management really like was improved because they don't have a choice. They have to do this. It's the only thing they have to do this. They cannot see their professors. They have to do it by themselves. And lastly, they said family value. Mm -hmm. So with the same questions, I'm going to go through this question back to our um, guests for today. So what are the learning uh, experiences or the learned lessons that you have from the past pandemic? Would you be kind to share it with us? So what are the positive things that come out at your end? We might maybe start from Sammy. Yes, of course. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I feel like there was a lot. There was a lot of negativity, but there was a lot of positivity. So kind of like everyone kind of touched on it a little bit, just like the value of the people you're surrounded with. You know, it, it really increased it in how much you depend on each other mm -hmm. just to survive. I don't know if that's exaggerating or not, <laughs> but it's that my bond with my family and then my friends that I, including Dustin and a few others in the cohort too, just it, we all struggle together. Yes. So it made that bond stronger, you mm -hmm. know? And then I learned a lot about myself and how I handle it really fast change. And I, I think that's gonna help a lot with the nursing profession yes. in the future mm -hmm. is just being able to adapt and take on just the whole world changing overnight. So I think that that's a lot to do with it. And that's those are the top things that I could think of to answer this question that I felt I felt really it was very positive, you know, from this experience. Oh, thank you so much, Miss Sammy. And yeah. pretty much you really did a good job with that. As I said, you graduated with highest honors. So you're able to manage things at your end. So congratulations. All right. So Justin, can you say something about that question that we just asked? I would say a lesson learned on my end would just be dedication. Okay. Switching to the online platform, mm -hmm. you're, you're really in a self-taught atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And just have being disciplined enough to force That's yourself right. to study. And, and, you know, like Sammy said, have those, those that teamwork mentality. Um, we very much, our group never left anybody behind. If somebody was struggling on something, we stopped what we had to do and make sure that they got up to speed with the others. So dedication, teamwork. That's, that's probably my largest lesson learned through, throughout the pandemic. Oh, thank you so much. That's a good one, dedication, because I guess we also professors did the same way, right? Mm -hmm. Dr. Bermondo, I was doing the same thing. Dedication was really up and running for both of us, mm -hmm. I guess. What about Richard? Do you have something to add? I do. So, you know, uh, piggybacking on what uh, Sammy said, adaptation, you know, that was the biggest factor, you know, adapting to uh the given circumstances with um you know the whole pandemic absolutely affected everyone 
you know, regardless if it was uh, positive or negative. For me, I felt like it uh, affected me in more positive aspect. Um, you know, uh, I believe, you know, when adversity hits you, I always highly, highly tell myself embrace it because ultimately it makes you and develops you into a better version of yourself. Um, cause it's always about that obsession for progression mentality. Um, you know, and not only that, you know, it's, it's really dialing in and digging deep for that intrinsic motivational factor, because being at home, you're at your place of rest play and work mm, yes. so you're mm -hmm. mixing all three together so typically everyone kind of divides everything you know your place of work your place of rest and your place of play you know uh but you know with the pandemic we had to utilize that and adapt with that uh so i think that was the, one of the biggest habits was just uh you know overcoming those small adversities because ultimately you know um you have to do that as a nurse you know i yes i'm uh, i'm the baby of uh the nursing students but you know, uh, you have to uh, uh, evolve and, uh, you know, uh, take the hits and whatever, you know, the patients give you. You have to think quick, you know, critically uh, uh, think within the certain aspects. So uh, I think uh, last year was absolutely a year where I feel like I grew one of the most, if not the most, throughout uh, my life. So. Yeah, all right. So that was really good. Rest, play and work. Wow. You, you see how Richard said, critically think. Exactly. Yeah, right. He's, that, he's thinking like a nurse. <laughs> he will be a nurse pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So what about Richard? Do you have something in mind? Or is it Justin? Oh, Justin. Richard mm -hmm. is done. It was Justin now. Mm -hmm. With the J. Um, I think the biggest lesson learned for me was just kind of taking everything as it is. Like not being, like just noticing and understanding things that you're that are un, out of your control and just kind of going with it and just like they said like adapting to the change because the pandemic hit so fast like there was like a small like little buffer of like hey this is gonna happen and then we just went full-on quarantine um so I think the biggest lesson for me was just kind of uh, adapting to that change and just being able to kind of like how Richard said earlier look at the glass half full like just because, you know, kind of the world stopped, it wasn't gonna stop us to, you know, continue with nursing school or kind of, you know, stop from the program or withdraw because, you know, Dustin and Sammy, you're, you're done. Me and Richard are still going at it. The pandemic is still happening, but we're still kind of progressing forward. Um, so I think that's kind of the biggest lesson that I learned within the past year. Oh, look at that. Did you learn something today, Dr. Bermondo? <laughs> yes, yeah, so all of them are have turned uh, this event or this pandemic into something positive. Exactly. And uh, mm -hmm. they used their creativity in order to, you know, come out be to be a successful nursing student or a new graduate even. Mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you guys for sharing your experience. And I believe my last question has been answered because you've, you've talked about you know, the habits that you've learned, That's right. about how you were being creative and meeting your community and connecting with your family. So what I would like to ask is, you know, if, if there's any additional inspiring words mm -hmm. that you have specifically for your cohort or you would like to acknowledge your family, please feel free to do so at this point. Any additional word of wisdom from you guys? Because we're gonna go share this episode with the rest of the students out there. Well, one thing I'd like to say is Justin, Richard, you know, you guys are gonna do awesome. Can't wait to, to hear when you both graduate. But uh, one, one big thing that was important for me throughout the nursing program, and, and I'm sure it is for everybody, is just having that group of like-minded individuals mm -hmm. that you trust, that you know have your back through thick or thin. And uh, those bonds, you're gonna keep that for years and years and years after you graduate and do what you can to maintain that. So it's gonna help you now and it's gonna help you in the future. Wow. Agree. <laughs> very good, very powerful. Justin, very good. Any additional, Sammy? Um. Yeah. I I liked what Dustin said for sure. And I think something big, I I cried so much. I'm so emotional, it's such a stress ball. <laughs> so That's I, norm. Yes, yes. Yeah, so cried yesterday too, just saying. I did. 
think like it's so stressful. Um, no, no, what I mean, like just to direct it more positively um, is like what Justin said, those people, those like-minded people that you'll create that relationship with, they're there for you, use them because they're going through the same thing you're going through, you know, and just keep going. Like, so take a break. Definitely. If you're, this is what I needed to remind myself. And that's why I had people surrounded with me is I just need to I just need a break. I need to go work out, go to the gym like you guys do. You know, you read, you know, draw, just do something other than nursing for 30 minutes, you know, 10 minutes if that's what you can handle. That's perfect. But your life doesn't have to be sucked up by school, which was, an, you know, a thought that I had to get used to. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say. Just keep going. Keep those relationships. It's going to be it'll be okay. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much. Any words from our students? So you could give parting words to our graduates. Now it's time for Richard and Justin to say something. <laughs> Justin, Sammy, Justin would you off, like to start? Oh, yeah, sure. Justin and Sammy, first off, congratulations. You know, I admire where you guys are and I hope to be there soon. Mm -hmm. um, I think piggybacking off what you guys said earlier too it's having that group of people like you we are we are not going through nursing school alone um we talked about this with my cohort before like the <laughs> challenge part or not the challenge the yeah the competition part of the program is over like we're going through this together and just like you guys said having that group of people um knowing that you are not alone and you can always ask questions i think that's the biggest thing for going through nursing school and that just having that positive attitude that we got this, we are where we are now because of who we are. Thank you so much. What about Richard? You know, I love the the mentorship. I feel the mentorship uh, here. And at CSN, uh, I'm part of the mentor mentee program, you know, so the four semester students, they pick us, uh, you know, during when they were four semester, I was a first semester student, so they, they were able to pick um, you know, a student and, you know, have them under their wing and guide them. So I appreciate, you know, Dustin, uh, Justin and Sammy for, you know, sharing your insight with, uh, with me. Um, you know, I believe the biggest thing I can tell future nursing students is literally never give up. And I know how cliche this sounds. Um, you literally can do whatever you put your mind to, you know, literally whatever you put your mind to you can do it it just depends on how much desire how much passion how much drive you have for it um you know um luckily for me you know there were yeah uh, you know i've had those moments like you know maybe it's gonna hit me in the future but i've never had the moment where like is nursing really for me you know <laughs> uh, i've always had that moment where it's like you know i'm gonna i'm gonna get there one day you know, not in a, not in a, you know, arrogant way, but in a confident way. You have to be, as a nursing student and as a nurse, you have to be confident with yourself and you have to portray that. Um, and then the last thing is, I think it's all about just balance. You know, having that balance as a student, you know, having that student life, that your life, your regular life and just balancing everything out because life really is an act of balance, you know, so thank you. Wow, that was so powerful, Dr. Bermondo. I learned a lot, mm -hmm. you know? Thank you, guys. And uh, uh, as you know, the nursing profession is grounded, grounded in caring. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, the nurses are the first one to neglect <laughs> or forget about self-care. So we really have to remind ourselves that in order to care for others, we need to take care, care of ourselves. Yeah. So uh, on that note, thank you very much, guys, for uh, sharing your experiences and being with us today. And uh, Dr. Burines? Yes, but I am so happy and I'm so delighted with all the ideas that we got from our um, guests today. So basically, for our listeners out there, you got a lot. You know, we got a lot from our uh, guests. So the first thing that I learned is about dedication, of course, self-care. Self-care is always there. Self-discipline, wow, that is powerful. We also have here some support, family support, progression mentally. 
They talk about critically thinking, that's great, and then time management and collaboration. And I think with all the things that we discussed today with our you know, guests and our questions, it guided us to come out with the self-care wheel. Remember, Kuya Yo posted earlier a wheel that comprises that a self-care is comprised or it incorporates basically in our physical, psychological, emotional, personal, and professional being. So this is the totality of everything. So now, when you're talking of self-care, it's not just about physical, it's the entire person of who you are. So of all the stories that we got today, I also was able to connect in every part of the wheel. So some of them talk about their physical activities. Some of them were emotional about their family. Some of them was probably less of a spiritual, but it's a part of it. Right, Dr. Bermondo, what uh, else I, did you learn from that? I couldn't agree more, you know, the <laughs> connection with uh, whatever you believe in a higher being or anything spiritual is really significant to our self-care and mental health. Mm -hmm. That is really great. So I think we're running out of time. We have a nice discussions here, guys. Thank you so much. So I guess we have, is there anything else you wanna add, Dr. Bermondo? Oh, well, that's it. Thank you, and please uh, stay safe. And uh, we encourage you to, if you haven't been vaccinated with the COVID-19 vaccine, please go out there and be vaccinated. Yes, and on behalf of our AAPNA of Nevada, who sponsored the Healthy Monday, I would like to say thank you, Sammy, Dustin, Justin, and Richard, and of course, Dr. Bermondo, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. This is very, very like powerful. We could impart the lives of other people. And of course, in behalf of Dr. Marifi Armstrong, thank you so much for having this program because of the Healthy Monday, we were able to share what we have to other people. And on behalf of our Healthy Monday family, thank you, Kuya Yo of PHLV. Thank you for having us today. Uh, if not for Kuya Yo, we will not be here, Dr. Bermondo. Correct. Okay. So thank you so much, everyone. We will see you in the future. And to all our Kababayans, thank you so much. Have a nice day and be safe and do self-care all the time. Mm -hmm. The Asian American Pacific Islander Nurses Association of Nevada has just brought you Healthy Mondays with Apina of Nevada.